the perfect will of God. And I'll be sharing with you on the same. Understanding the perfect will of God and how you can bounce back. First of all, I want you to understand one thing. Death is real. Death is painful. It is not scriptural to deny that there is death. It is absurdly and godly to preach and to understand that death exists. And again, it's not scriptural to have a certain mentality that death comes from God. I want you to understand one thing in the seven days. God created the world in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. And on those six days, there was no death created. God created the life. Amen. So there is no anywhere else speaking of God's will in relation to death. So what is it? What's the difference? What are we talking about when we stand over here and tell you that there is the God's will behind this and this, God's will behind this? And this is where now we come up into the uh, whole conception and the difference of all religions. That's where Christianity outstands other religion. Hear this. The reason. Why I want you to understand this and to get this into your, into your understandings and your, 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 uh, your, your, your spirits. It is, it is that reason of knowing that death is real and that death does not come from God. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26, the Bible says the last enemy to be defeated is death. So death is not a friend. Death is an enemy. Death is so painful. It is from that level of revelation that Jesus Christ came to say, I have to go and defeat death. Amen. Now, so Jesus Christ came and said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who dies in me, though people may look at him as though dead, yet he shall live. So life began when Jesus Christ came and they said, right now, there is no more death. Amen. Death has been defeated. Death has been sorted up in victory. Yeah. So when we are dealing with death, and I want you to understand one thing over here, it, it also about what you believe. And when God called me, he told me that from now, I want you to believe in life. Amen. So from that single day until today, I don't believe in death. I believe in life. So when a person dies, when somebody says they are dead, I know, first of all, I understand, is God behind this death or not? Trust me, we have prayed against the spirit of death. Wherever God was not involved, we prayed and we stopped it. Wherever it's not God's will, we will stop it. Until today, I'm telling you the truth. And where God's will is, we have no hands over it. Now, the Lord kept on speaking to me to say, speak to the people and communicate with the people. Because listen to me, there's going to be something that's going to be, be done. When we are dealing with the divine will and, 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 and the perfect will, is, there are certain people who are passing through certain situations. And they really don't know whether what they're passing through, there is God in it or there is no God in it. It is more important to understand that. And in today's message that I'll be sharing with you for a few minutes, I will make you understand what you're passing through, where, whether that is God's will or not, is, uh, uh, not God's will. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, uh, we're going to start reading from verse 1. The Bible says a very important thing. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, it says, by... The masons of God that you present your bodies a living, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, verse two. Now, the Bible says, "And be not conformed to the uh, to to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may, who, oh, that you may." It says that you may what? 
Prove. Prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, there are three words there. There is the good will, there is the perfect will, and then there is acceptable will. Now, in, in, in NIV, it speaks of the pleasing. So we have the pleasing will, we have the perfect will, we have the good will, and we have the acceptable will. And all these are God's wills. And now, if somebody may ask you a question, what you're passing through, or what you are pursuing, or what you're doing, what type of will is it? Is it good will? Is it God's good will? Or is it a pleasing will? Or is it the acceptable will of God? Or is it the perfect will of God? Now, now, I, I, are you following? Yes. Oh, yes. Now, it's more important to understand that. Now, for the interest of time, I, I was supposed to share with you what is the good will, the pleasing, the acceptable. But for the interest of time, I will just take you straight to the perfect will. What is the perfect will of God? And how do you know I'm living in the perfect will or I need the perfect will of God to be done upon my life? Now, someone is, uh, okay, I'm going to give you a good example of myself, all right? There was a particular time that I really prayed, you know, after my high school. I was like, God, I really want, there was a certain school in my mind. And this school is not in this country. It's not in Malawi. It's in another country. I was like, Lord, there was a scholarship and my friends were coming to me. Oh, there's a scholarship and can you apply and all these type of things. And, and I really prayed. And I really wanted to go and learn at this school. My heart was there. And I fasted for it. I prayed. It looked so perfect. It looked so well and amazing. And I prayed. I said, God, I want to go to this university. I want to go. I want scholarship for this, uh, uh, for this school. I really want to go. And what happened? I didn't go. My friends were, 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 were picked. Trust you me. Nothing broke me in that year than that. I was like, I wish I went to that school. I wish I got that scholarship. Trust you me, three years later, the, the school just ended the scholarship, closed the program, and they came back home. They wasted their three years at the university and got nothing. It was a good thing, but it was not the perfect will. Oh, am I talking to somebody right here? There are certain things that look so good. There are certain things that look like, oh, I want to be in this and I want to do it. But actually, there is no God's perfect will. Now, so if the Bible there in Romans 12 verse 3, the Bible said that you may understand the perfect will. What would the Bible mean? What is the meaning of the perfect will of God? So the first thing we have to understand is the word perfect. And we need to find what is the word perfect signifying. Now, the word perfect comes from the word seven. In Hebrew. Now, the word perfect is the word seven. It, it is the word that implies, defines the word perfection. It is the word that defines the, way, the, the word completion, something that is complete. Now, when the Bible says the perfect will, we are not just dealing with the word perfect will. We are dealing with the complete we are dealing with something that has been perfected. So we are not dealing with maybe God wanted it. Or we have pleaded with the Lord that it must be this way. But it's how God is trying to take you into. So there are certain things. I'm going to give an example of a business. That there are certain businesses that God wants you to do. But you are not actually in them. So God says, I'm waiting until you hear my perfect will and get your direction right into this particular business. Then I'll begin to lead you. Now, so a person is in a wrong business. No matter how you will pray for it, it will be so difficult for you to see a breakthrough until you understand the perfect will of God. Now, Hear what, 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 what David says in Psalm 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, he said, I will not want. I shall not want. I shall not lack. He says, why? He gives reasons. He says, he leads me. Okay, he leads me where the green pastures are. It's him who leads me 
I don't lead myself. He says, he makes me lie down. It's not that I just lie down, but he makes me lie down. So in other words, there is a healing of what God is saying. How many people are actually on their own lying down on pastures which are not green? And they think to their mindsets that the pastures, they are, is, they are green pastures. How many people are actually going to, to wells where they think they are still waters? And yet God says, where are you going? They are not still waters. I want you to take this direction. Because in this service, someone would discover the perfect will of God. It is important. It is very important. Somebody will discover what God wants them to be. Amen. Now, now, here we go. Now, from the scripture we have discovered, the perfect will of God, which is better than the good, the pleasing, the acceptable, the Bible says, and the perfect will. Okay? It says that you may be able. It says to know. To know. To know. Now, we are dealing with the perfect will. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody came to me and said, oh, I thank God. I said, what do you mean? He said, actually, my girlfriend, I had a girlfriend. And I really prayed. And I really wanted this girlfriend to be my wife. And I fasted for this woman. And looked at God, didn't hear me. I was so heartbroken because we, she, 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 she left me. And I just heard the news that she has killed her husband. And she has also killed herself. It could be me. No, somebody didn't hear me. So he said, I thank God because he didn't hear my prayer. Yeah, oh, it looked good. She, she, by the way, she was, she was in the choir. And he was like, oh, I, I, I really wanted a woman who sings. And what happened? It was not God's perfect will. There are some people who have actually gone through moments of disappointments. I want to teach you, how do you, when you find yourself in a moment of brokenness, and, and it's actually the will of God, how do you stand up? When you find yourself in a moment of want, where in fact it's God's will, and you find yourself in a situation where you have got no money, you have got completely no job, and it's God's will. How do you bounce back? How do you stand back on your feet? How do you understand the perfect will and move on and keep on doing? Oh, Marakia Fradia Super Artist. Somebody say, I hear you, prophet. It's important to understand that because the moment you don't understand, you will, in fact, you will not know God's perfect will and you will be in a mess. Now, let me just show you something. From Romans 12, we have a head. And read, the Bible says, do not submit yourself to the standards of the world. And then the Bible says, but, it says, be you transformed. It says there must be a transformation. But this transformation, it's not I, God, who will bring it to you. It says it is you. It says you must be transformed. It says it is you. It says how will you do it? It says by your mindset. He says by, you re by renewing of your mind that you may be able to understand. So he says this type of, of, of transformation that you've been praying for, fasting for, looking for. The, the Bible says it's all in your mind. It says when you transform yourself. By only renewing your mind and beginning to understand the perfect will, he says, that shall transform you. Amen. Oh, am I talking to somebody? He says, that shall what? He says, it's not I in heaven to transform you. He says, the moment your mind is renewed and you begin to understand my perfect will, he says, that shall transform you. The reason why some people in this service will be transformed, they will understand the perfect will. And they'll begin to operate in the ayama seteke prados. Somebody say, yes, prophet. Yes, prophet. Hallelujah. Yes. I said, hallelujah. Yes. Now, we understand, as I said before, that there is no perfection without number seven. Because the Bible says, for we to understand the perfect will of God. Now, the, the word perfect, as I said, is the word is seven. Are you here? So there are seven things that a person must do for them to understand the perfect will. 
Mm. There are seven things to understand for you to start operating in the perfect will of God. Now, quickly, in, in less than a few minutes, uh, I will take you through the seven things that a person must go through for them to find themselves in the perfect will. Now, after explaining that to you, all right, I'm going to now tell you how you can bounce. You see how you can, you see, you come back from what God allows to happen around you. If you only understand that, it's the most amazing. Watch this. Just to watch this. First of all, I want to just show you something. How many here believe in God's perfect will? How many here, they, they want to, you know, if I may ask, you know, if, if somebody would meet me, you know, and say, Major one, do you want God's perfect will? I would be, yes, yes. And it looks like we want good things only. It looks like when God says, okay, uh, you want my will to happen to you? Okay, now I will take you out of this job. Oh, my God. Like, what's going on around me? And if the Lord says, I'm going to make this thing happen in this way, be like, but what's going on? What's happening right here? Now, let me just show you this. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6, the Bible speaks of how I speak. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, I want you to understand one thing here. As I said, when we are dealing with the perfect will, there are things that you must do yourself in order for you to operate in the perfect will. Now, the Bible says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Not for everyone. Okay? Because people think, oh, as long as I'm a human being, I can hear the wisdom of God. No. It says, but we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world. That comes to nothing. It says the wisdom of this world is useless. It comes to nothing. He says, but we speak the wisdom from God. You know, he says, we speak the wisdom of God. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, we speak it. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. He said, there is a certain wisdom that is hidden. It says, this one is revealed to the mature. It says, we don't talk this wisdom to anyone. This is why there are certain things I can preach to you. Because they are wisdom, you only speak to the grown-up. There's a certain wisdom hidden to the church. Because a church is just a mixture of everyone. But there are certain things that are hidden. It says, these ones we reveal unto them that are mature. We reveal unto them that are perfect. Now, come on. Somebody say, yes, prophet. Yes, prophet. This is why a lot of people, they are confused. They don't even know what to do, where to go. What's God saying about their situation? It's more painful when you begin to understand what other things God hides in the world. One would ask a question. Why would God allow me to be in this situation? I want to ask you a question. Why, why would God allow you to be in what you're passing through right now? Why would God be silent when you have fasted and prayed for financial breakthrough? Why would God be silent when you have fasted and prayed to have a child? Why would God be silent when you have fasted and prayed that you must get married? Why would God be silent when you have fasted and prayed that you must have a miracle? Why would God be silent? And there can only be two things. It's either there is the devil's will or there is God's will. And if it is the devil, we will rebuke him. And we're going to cast him out. If it is the will of God, you must understand it. And how you can bounce back in that will. Do you know that Hannah was pregnant only when she understood the will of God? Do you know so many Christians until today, they give examples of Hannah. And they don't even know what actually Hannah happened with Hannah. The Bible doesn't say that Hannah was barren because the devil closed her womb. The Bible says God closed her womb. We are not dealing with the devil here. Masaradigos. 
We are dealing with God. One would wonder. The Bible says God closed her womb. Until she understood what is the perfect will. The perfect will of God was that child to be given in the temple. Because the child that is supposed to be born out of her will be a prophet called Samuel. Until the day she understood and went on the altar and said to God, when the child is born, I shall give unto you. The Bible says, and God opened her womb. Meaning there was the perfect will hidden. There are certain people that will never have a breakthrough until they understand the perfect will. Why God will open up their womb. Why God will open up their finances. Why God will open up their healing. Why God will open up their miracle. Because there are certain things you must understand the perfect. Oh. I feel like I'm talking to someone and, and somebody's getting what I'm trying to say right here. Right. So the Bible speaks of this. Are you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, when you are dealing with the perfect of God, sometimes it's so painful because you can pass through certain things and you would wonder why. Now, if you are not yet mature, if you are not yet perfect, you will miss the wisdom of God. Now, the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 8. Now, I want you to go Mark chapter 8 from verse 31, okay? And we're going to stop somewhere in verse 33. Okay? I want you to see this. And... He began to teach them. He began to do what? Then the son of man must suffer many things. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know when you read this, it's because it's Jesus. So it doesn't really sink into your heart. The Bible says that he began to teach them that Jesus must suffer many things. Wow. Did you? Did you just hear that? And did you hear that it's not just your brother or your cousin? It's actually the son of, of God, Jesus Christ himself. Did you hear that this is Jesus, that he must suffer many things? One would wonder why. One would say, but why? This is Jesus. We are not dealing here with just a person in the street. This is not Job. This is not Daniel. We are dealing with Jesus, God himself. He is in the second Godhead. He is where God Father and is seconded by Son. And the Bible says he must suffer many things. Now, now just, just, just to go there. Now, if you are suffering something and it is the perfect will of God, you better understand why and how you will bounce back and how, wh what is the reason why you must suffer in that way. Because if you don't, you're going to die in the way you are because you don't even understand the perfect will. I can tell you there are people in the Bible who died and they missed the perfect will, like King Saul. King Saul, the Bible says that when, when, when Samuel was anointing him, he actually said, are you not anointed to inherit the inheritance of God? Yet King Saul died without inheriting it. Because Paul, I mean Saul did not understand the perfect will. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. So when you see people rejecting a man of God, it says actually it, it, was, it was actually already made in that way. Oh, you didn't hear me. The Bible says it was made in that way that he must be rejected. Not by little people, but actually by elders. You see, he began to teach them. So, so, so you, you are dealing with one person who is just rejecting you and you can't sleep the whole night. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm passing through. Oh, my mother. Oh, my mother. You, you, you are giving us a headache because of your mother. You feel, listen to me. There are certain things they are prearranged. You just have to understand the will of God and how to walk out and how, listen to me, wherever there is God's will, there is a way. And there is a big testimony hiding around it. The Bible says, and he began to teach them. Now, go, go there, go there. It says, and he began to teach them. And I want you to see this. It's, it's going to end very interestingly. What Peter is going to do here. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of what? The chief priests and the scribes. Huh? And he must be what? And be killed. 
and after three days, rise again. This is where the whole story is. The, the word of God is all the suffering. The word of God is all the things he's going to pass through. But then the word of God also is that he's going to rise again. Amen. Somebody shout out, rise again. Amen. This is the secret now. He says, I'm going to go through these things. But when I pass through these things, I will what? So this is where I want to teach you. How do you rise again? How do you stand up? Let me tell you something. I will rise like I've never risen before. Come on, somebody say yes, 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 yes. The Bible says, let's just check this. <laughs> I like what I'm reading from the scriptures. It says, go ahead, it says, and he spake that saying, not in secret. It says, openly. And Peter took him and he began to rebuke him. Uh, Somebody said that to me. He said, Papa, what you're speaking is not God's will. He said, I rebuke what you're saying. The Bible said, when Jesus said, it's God's will that I must be killed and rise again. The Bible says, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine who's supposed to rebuke who? <laughs> hey. He says, and he began to rebuke Jesus. I rebuke you now in your name. <laughs> you will not die. He says, I rebuke you. And the Bible says he began to rebuke Jesus. I rebuke you. But Jesus saying it is the perfect will that it must happen in this way. Because when it happens in this way, I will rise again. He says, it is the perfect. He says, no, 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 I rebuke you. Verse 33, then Jesus says what? He says, now it's me who is rebuking you. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Can you see someone is rebuking and someone is rebuking back? <laughs> Peter is rebuking Jesus. And Jesus rebukes him back. He says, I rebuke you. He says, why am I rebuking you? He says, why? He says, not of any other reason. Not because of what you are saying. He says, because you don't know the will of God. He says, but I, and, 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 and he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me. Yeah. Who? He says, Satan. He says, why? For thou severeth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. He says, the whole reason I'm rebuking you is because in your mind, they are not things of God. Yeah. They are things of men. Yeah. Now, question is, what are the things of men? Now, let's, let's, let's be men now. As a man, I wouldn't want to lose my child. As you as a man, you wouldn't want to, to have what you're passing through happen in the way. He says, he says, in your mind, you have got the things of men. He says, that's what I'm rebuking. He says, the things of men are satanic. He says, in your mind, he says, I rebuke you. He says, I rebuke you. He says, why am I rebuking you? He says, because in your mind, he says, you have got things of men. He says, they are not of God. Did you hear that? So when you have the things of God in you, you will not rebuke the will of God. So there are people who are rebuking what God says, it must happen in this way because I want to raise you up. Unless somebody tells me that your God, you see, that God is not all-knowing. God knew actually before time began. Before I was born, God actually knew that you're going to have a child. And when, it's, it's not like the child was born by accident. God knew that she's going to go in this moment and she'll be with the parents. And at this moment, I'm going to take her and this will be the reason. Now, it's so painful. But if you have the things of men in your mind, you will rebuke the will of God. The Bible says, I rebuke you, for in your mind you don't have the things of God. He says, I rebuke you. Peter, Peter was, not, was not, according, if it was even you, you would do the same to say, no, 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 no. Jesus, we don't want you to die. 
Peter didn't understand the perfect will. And I find it so interesting because there are 12 disciples, but only one is resisting. It looks love, but actually it was the devil. There are certain things we may not want them to happen in that way, but it could be the devil actually. And Jesus doesn't say, it is your love loving me that you don't want me to die. He didn't say that. He says, it's actually the devil making you feel that way. Oh, am I talking to somebody, right? Now, it is important to then understand, why am I passing through this situation? Why are you going through what you're passing through? Is, is the job, you, you know, somebody lost a job, somebody lost a business, somebody lost something, somebody is going through something right now. Now, now, as I told you, that is it God's will or it is the devil that is trying to mess you up? And, and, and as far as it is the devil, Jesus said, I have given you power to cast out evils. Did you understand me? There is no scripture which says to cast out my will. It says to cast out evils. To cast out evils, to cast out anything coming, bothering you that is not of God. Tonight I oppose it and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Now let me just show you this. One of the seven things that makes perfection. How, how the, the Bible says we speak to those people that are perfect. Not to everyone. This is why people don't even understand where they're going. They just don't know which, which door to open. The Lord has given them keys, but they don't know which one to use to open the door. So they are trying right now. That is the whole door for them. But they're trying to check this key. It's not opening. Listen to me. If it's a wrong key, it's a wrong key. No matter how, no matter how, how many keys are in your hands, but if they are all wrong, they will not open the door. You may have so many opportunities, but if they're all wrong, they will not open the door. You may have so many boyfriends, but if they're all wrong, no one will marry you. You may actually have a lot of things that look so nice, so many opportunities. But if they are wrong, none of them will take you to another level. You need perfect ways. Something that is perfect. And the will of God is sometimes you can't understand it. This is why I don't sit down and say, but why? How are things supposed to happen in this way? How are things? You see, if you are using ways of men, you don't understand it. Because God will tell you to do something that is completely not understandable by men. It's not something that people will understand it. It is something that you must accept. And move in that divine perfect will. As I said to you, Hannah didn't understand why she was barren. The Bible says every year she was in the temple praying, Oh Lord, open my womb. Father, she maybe even thought it was a demon. Maybe she even thought it was ancestral spirits. It was nothing to do with the devil. The Bible says God had closed her womb. Until she said, God, I, if the child will come out of my womb, I give the child to you. Until you make that prayer. To say, Father, if this thing happens. Until you understand the perfect way. Why God would allow the people of Israel to be in 40 years in the desert. 40 years to face the Amalekites, To face the Ammonites. Why? Why facing all the deadly things? Battles. The Bible says God was dealing with something. Because God was looking for his glory to be revealed. Actually, the Bible says whatever was happening to them in Egypt, it was God who had hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So that he can show his power. All what they were passing through in Egypt, the Bible says God had done it purposely. So you may be wondering, why am I passing through? I'm passing through? Why is my boss so strong? Why, 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 why is this person? The Bible says God hardened the heart of a man. Hardened the heart of fellow. And you may be surprised why you're passing through the situation. Looks like the boss over there who's supposed to sign a signature is just messing up. And you're like, but I'm trying, you know, 
all things, all things are right there. And, and it's just the signature supposed to be signed. Until today, the signature has not been signed. Why? Because God is trying to show his power. I'm trying to tell you something. If it is the will of God to reveal how big, how strong he is. Trust you me. If you only understand, you shall bounce back. In Exodus 9 verse 12. Are you, are you there? In Exodus 9 verse 12. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Who, who did it? It says, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. So God is dealing with the two things here. He's dealing with Moses, sending him to Pharaoh. At the very same time, God goes behind doors to Pharaoh and hardens his heart. God says to Moses, perform miracles in front of Pharaoh. Moses stands there, performs miracles in front of Pharaoh. God goes to Pharaoh, don't release them. This is why he's called God. Nobody advises him. Nobody tells him what to do. He does what he wants to do. It's only when you understand the will. Listen to me. Moses, there was something he was supposed to understand. That all what is happening right here, I want to reveal to you the coming of Jesus. Until the day they understood that God is hardening their hearts because he wants to reveal to us about Jesus. The day they understood it was a Jesus story. That was the day God made them to walk out of slavery. The perfect will of God was for them to understand the message of Jesus. It is the day when they took the bread. Oh, are you understanding? When they took the bread, the Bible says they ate it as, as Passover. When they took the blood of the lamb and put on their door which was the prophecy that Jesus is going to come as a lamb and is going to shed his blood and that his body will be given as bread. When they took the bread and took the blood and put on the door, that's when God says, now I'm no longer going to harden fellow. My perfect will has been done. The message of the Messiah who is to come has been given unto you. Now you understand my will. Now you can go. Until you understand the perfect will, there are certain things. The glory of God shall be revealed. So what's happening right now? There are certain things happening to you. Some of you are home now. You just don't even know where to go, what to do, how to do it. But God says, until you understand my will. In Psalm 66, quickly, verse 9 to 12, in NIV, the Bible records in this way. I just want to show you that. He says, he has preserved our lives. And what? And, and kept our feet from what? Sleeping. Now, verse 10. It says, for you, God, tested us. Amen. This is a moment people don't like it. Being tested by God. Some God goes to Moses. Some God goes to Pharaoh. Testing them. He says, your God tested us. Now check that. He says, your God tested us. You refined us like silver. In that testing, it's a moment you need to understand because otherwise you're going to fall. It's a moment you must become a silver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody says, I'm becoming a silver. I'm being refined. Jesus actually says, Jesus actually says, Jesus says, actually, uh, I'm supposed to be rejected. He says, by the elders, by the chief priests, by I'm supposed to be rejected. And I'm supposed to die. And I'll rise again. hi yeah, yeah. He goes to fellow hardens his heart. Moses performed wonders. Peter says, I rebuke you. Jesus says, I rebuke you too. <laughs> Peter, why don't you want me to show, why don't you want to see God being glorified by my resurrection? He says, Lord, you have tested us. 
you have proved us. You have tried us. And you have refined us. And we are now like silver. Now, the Bible says what? The Bible continues saying what? It says, you brought us into prison. Can you imagine? It says, you, you, you actually allowed us to go to prison. It says, you brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. It was God doing it. Not the devil. It says, you, you allowed us to go into prison. You laid burdens on our backs. Do you know a burden? It is something heavy. Can you imagine you, uh, you know, having a problem? Some of you don't even go through what we go through. Somebody came to me, oh, my father, please change my story. I'm passing through what no one has ever gone through. I'm like, uh huh. I look, I was like, what could this be? That could be more than what I'm passing through. And I'm like, what is that? It's like my boyfriend. The whole day, he's not picking up my call. I said, you see this? I said, this is what you are saying that is more than what everyone in the world is going through. The Bible says he even allowed us to go to prison. It says he laid burdens at our backs. It says it was God doing it. It says why? Well, let's continue. It says what? It says he laid burdens at our backs. It says you let people ride over our heads. People. God allowed people. It says people. You wake up in the morning, people are talking about you. Like, well, what is going on? He says, God allowed them. He says, God allowed. He says, he, he al you let people ride over our heads. He says, we went through fire and water. It was God doing it. He says, but you brought us to a place of abundance. The biggest problem. The biggest problem is when, when, how will you walk to that place? You don't even know. You just even, don't even, just home now. You are even giving up praying. You feel like it's too much for you. You, feel, you must understand the perfect tool of God and why God. And when you understand that you must go, because God wants you to bounce back. He wants you to come to the place of abundance. He wants you to be refined. He wants you to become a sufa. He wants his glory to be revealed. He wants to show that his name is Yahweh. And you must understand that. If you don't, you'll be like, I'm praying. I'm fasting. Oh, what are you fasting for? Uh, I'm praying for, for, for business now. I'm praying for a breakthrough. I'm praying. Ah! When people just touch you like this, they're like, I, 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 I don't know what to do now. The Bible says, people, in fact, God will allow them. He says, even Jesus says, people will reject him. Jesus, this is, the, your name is not even Jesus. I'm, I'm telling you, there's not even J on your name. <laughs> there is no J, like, oh, your, your name actually is, is, it starts with S. You're not even, there is nothing like J or G. And, and, and this is Jesus. He says he has to go through this. It's God's will. Can you imagine when Jesus Christ was in the garden? When Jesus says, Lord, I wish. He says, I wish this cup could pass me by. He says, but. He says, what? He says, but. He says, but, Lord. He says, let your perfect will. Let your perfect will. He said, I wish, even me, I wish the cup could pass me by. But let your perfect will. He says, God shall take us to a place of abundance. I'm looking at somebody right now who, who they are passing through a very tough situation. And listen to me, God wants to, to show you something from this. Now, number one, quickly, how do you become how how do you become perfect for the perfect will? How do you become perfect for the perfect will? Number one, it is important to notice and to not. Number one, it is important to become a sacrifice. Most people have not given themselves to God as sacrifices. 
I just told you about Hannah. Until she sacrificed, what will be born out of her? You see, she would never have a child. Until she said, Lord, right now, what will be born out of me shall be given to you. In the book of Romans, the Bible says, offer yourself to become what? A living sacrifice. It says it is then you will be able to understand the perfect will. Until you say, all my money will be used for the kingdom. Let me tell you, the budget of heaven is too much for his children. The financial year of heaven carries a big budget. God is waiting for somebody to only hearken unto his will. Because God has got a mandate to reach out to the poor, to build his churches. But God says, until I see properly your intentions, the Bible says you ask and you do not have. It says, because what? It says you ask to spend those things for your own reasons. So sacrifice, number one. All right, Romans 12, we read from verse 1 to 12. I mean, uh, uh, verse 1 to 3. Okay, now number two, trust God. It is important to trust God. In the book of Proverbs uh, 3, verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Okay? It says what's going to happen, he shall direct your paths, your ways. He shall direct. Number three, you must listen to counsel. The Bible says you error. Because you do not understand the scriptures. In Proverbs 11 verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. It says, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, one of the reasons Jesus Christ would come in the book of Isaiah is that he shall come as a counselor. And why people fail? It says people fall because they've got no counselor. You see how many people read the Bible? Even today, how many people read the Bible? It is so difficult to understand the perfect will without understanding the scriptures. And number four, you need to hear God. In John 10 verse 27, it says, My ship... They hear my voice and they know it. Not only hearing, but they know. There are moments you need just to hear what God is saying. You know, um, uh, on international visitors, I had international visitors uh, in the past. And so many people were uh, coming and I was giving them what God is saying. And they're like, oh my God. I actually thank God that I've heard it from God. My direction was different. And there are people who are not even bothering to hear from God. What is God saying? Should we pursue the enemy or not? David said, should we pursue them or not? You must understand that question he was asking when he had lost his wife. His wife was captured. All his children were captured. But he went to, the, to ask the Lord, if it was you, having your child taken and your wife taken, the first thing you will do is I'm going there. But David asked God, should we pursue? And the Lord said, pursue them. And we go number what? Number five. Commit what you're doing to God. Commit to what you're doing to the Lord. Commit to what you're doing to the Lord. In Psalm 37, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, go meet all your ways. Jesus, when he saw darkness coming, he said, Lord, in your hands I commit my spirit. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Verse 5, it says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Amen. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. 
The reason why God is not making certain things to happen is because you have not mentioned them. Committing your life to Jesus and committing what you are doing, your ways to him, they are two different things. Some people have committed their lives to Jesus, but not their ways, not their project. You need to sell with your mouth. Confess it with your mouth. I commit my house. I commit my finances. I commit my ministry in your hands. Jesus, he was actually in the house of God already. In fact, at the right hand side of the Father. But when he, when he saw darkness, he said, I commit my life. When you see things not going well, it's important to say it. I commit my health in your hands. I commit my children in your hands. I commit my project in your hands. Now, when we are dealing with perfection, you have to sacrifice, uh, number one. And number two, I say you need to trust in the Lord. You need to listen to counsel, which is the word the Bible said, they, they error because they do not understand the scriptures. You must hear God. You must commit your ways, what you do. Hallelujah. Amen. And number six, you must accept you must accept. Somebody say, you must accept. must accept. Now, that's more important. What's happening, you know, when, when, when the Lord spoke to me, I had to accept the word of God. It's important to accept it. It's, this teaching looks not important to somebody who looks like they don't know the word of God. The Bible says in Acts 16, verse 6 to 10, it's so confusing if it, if it was some of the people, they could be very confused. Can you imagine organizing a revival in New York City and you're going to New York after spending air tickets, accommodation, transport. You just arrive in New York like this and God says, I don't want you to preach here. You didn't hear me. That's not God's will. He says, I don't want you to preach here. After spending money for the crusade, expenses, paying for the stadium, Paul did it. After Paul paid for the whole event, did all what he could, landed, accommodation, and God says, you are not preaching here. <laughs> now, just, just see that scripture. The Bible says what? It says, now when they had gone throughout Phygia, and the region of Garasha, and we are forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Can you imagine going to India and being told by God, don't preach? After arriving, the Bible said they had already gone. Don't preach here. You think like, God... What is this? God says don't preach. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit. This is a good work. But God says don't do it. Mm. One time I stopped. I was supposed to give to, the, to, to a beggar in the street. And, and I stopped there. And God says don't. I, I was hearing the voice of God saying don't give him. And I was like. Mm, <clears throat> don't give him. I'm like hey. I told my driver give him. So they gave him. I never slept that night. The Lord says, you did wrong. The following day when I was passing over there, I found the guy again. He came. He's like, ah, I, need, I need some money. What do you think I did? I'm like, no way. I'm not going to give. And God said, give. Why the Lord didn't want me to give yesterday is because the man used the money to buy drugs. And why God wanted me to give the following day is because the man is going to use the money to buy food. So sometimes it's not just about charity. It's about God telling you to do it. You may actually be doing sin in giving. Because God didn't say do it. Sometimes not all the time you're supposed to be preaching. Sometimes God says, don't preach. But if you don't hear God, you just come, hallelujah, take the Bible, praise be to God. And you feel like you are serving and ministering, yet you are doing completely wrong. The Bible says, God said, do not preach in Asia. 
No wonder the gospel is difficult in Asia until today. God said, don't do it. Now, 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 now. Then you, God hasn't spoken anything. Like I'm planning a trip to India to preach. <laughs> we are fasting for our trip. We are going to, 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 to Hong Kong. God said to Paul, don't preach. You see what the Bible says? It says, and when we had gone through. Now, check the scripture back again. It says, now when they had gone throughout, it's not like they had just gone to one city. Can you imagine throughout when they would go this town, don't preach. They had gone this town, don't preach. The Bible says throughout. They had gone throughout the whole Fijia, the whole region of Galatia, and they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach in Asia. Now verse 7 makes things worse. So they left. They went to another city. After they were come to Mesia, they are said to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit did not allow them to preach again in Bithynia. After leaving Asia, took a ship. Let's go to Bithynia. They go to Bithynia. God is not here. Can you imagine where there, is, there, there are those cities, put businesses. When God says, do this business. And in fact, I mean, you think you do business. You, you enter into a business after you have already invested. After you have, and God says, no, 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 no. I'm not into this one. Leave it. And you stop it. You try another thing. God says, I'm not into it. But you see, you still cling over it because you like it. The Bible says, it says, you have in your mind the ways of men. He says, I rebuke you, Satan. He says, you do not have the things of God. You're still clinging. After this boyfriend, it never, it never worked. God said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not in this boyfriend. You leave. You go to another boyfriend. God said, I'm not in this boyfriend. Now, the Bible says when, when they went to Fiji. Now, check on that one. It says when they went to Fiji. This is, this is, it says, and when they, and the Holy Spirit suffered them not again in Fiji. They had gone to Garashia. They had gone to, to uh, uh, Fiji. They had gone to Asia. They had, God says, no, no. Seven, after they were come to Asia, they are said to go to uh, Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. Now, verse 8, it says what? And they passing by Mesia came down to Troas. So they went to Troas. Verse 9, what happened in Troas? And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man from Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come unto Macedonia. Ah, they had gone to this place. They have gone to Troas, just arriving in, Tro in Troas. You must understand how they were traveling in those days. They were no flights. They were ships. 14 days on their journey. Just arriving in Troas, God says, not here. Go to Macedonia. It is important to understand the perfect will of God. If God says, leave it, leave it. Now, number seven. Number seven which is the last one. I've told you. It's important to be a sacrifice, to hear God. I've told you, listen to counsel. I've told you to commit your ways to the Lord. I've told you to trust. It's important to trust in the Lord. And I've, to, I've told you also to accept. Paul was accepting. When God says not here, leave, he was accepting. Leave here, he was accepting. Leave here. He, he, he wasn't seeing how much he has invested in the journey. He was seeing how much God is saying. Accept. Somebody say, I accept. I accept. Somebody say, I accept. I accept. And the last one, it is bouncing back. Wow. That's the last part, the favorite part where somebody is going to bounce. Sharaka sore praku varamande redigo santa caparo region. Jekia sora prante ke vanto kosko praate. Now, I'm going to take in the story of First Samuel chapter 9 from verse 3. We jump from verse 3. We go into other verses, verse 15 to 17. All right, it's important to understand the perfect will of God. We hear the story of Saul. The Bible says, and Saul's father, the donkeys were missing. Now, sometimes it's, it's quite so simple to hear that the, the donkeys of the father of Saul were missing. I want you to put your cars. 
All right? That's how it will sound heavy, a bit well. Because if you put sauce donkeys, it's lighter. You wake up in the morning, your cars are gone. And it's the will of God. You didn't hear me. The missing of the donkeys of the father of Saul, it was not the will of the devil. God was in it. I want you to, to think this. You wake up in the morning. You know, you see if, you, if, if, if you, you are not a farmer, you don't understand the farming language. Can you imagine you wake up in the morning and all your, your, your cattle is missing? Can, can you, like, you wake up and you are faithful to God and you pray and everything is missing. Now, remove the, the, the word donkeys of, of source father. I want you to put your job. Your job is missing. You wake up in the morning. You'll be like, what? Be like, why? Why am I passing through this? So the Bible says, and Saul so, went looking for the donkeys. Saul so, began to look for the donkeys. Now, in 1 Samuel, now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's so father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. Do you understand that it was there, there was the will of God in the missing donkeys? In the missing knots of the money. Some of you, the money that is missing. There is the will of God inside it. In verse 15, the Bible says what? In verse 15, check that. In verse 15, the Bible says what? Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear. The day before Saul came saying. You hear that? Tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander. Do you understand that at this point in time, Saul goes to Samuel to meet a prophet, to ask the prophet where the donkeys are. So Saul makes a trip with a servant to inquire from a prophet where the donkeys are. And the Bible says, God had spoken to Samuel a day prior that tomorrow I will send you a man, anoint him to become a commander. You didn't hear me. So the coming of, 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 of Saul to a prophet looking for donkeys, actually the Bible says it is God sending him to be anointed to become a commander. There are certain people that came to my ministry looking for something which was lost. But God said to me, anoint him to be more than what they are looking for. Ah, oh, you didn't understand what I'm trying to say to you right now. He says, he says, anoint him. Anoint him. He's looking, say, uh, 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 I lost a job. I lost, I lost this. I'm major one. I'm looking for if I can find this. God says to me, anoint the person. There is something bigger and greater than the donkeys they're looking for. This man is a commander. He says, anoint him. Do you understand what the Bible is saying? There was the will of God in the lost donkeys. Sometimes it's important to accept the will of God. There is a promotion behind it. You may pray, yes. You may pray and you may ask God things to happen in a certain way how you want them. But it's important to understand how to bounce. King Saul, he's looking for the donkeys. And God says, now go back to the scripture. The, the, the Bible says, no, tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man on the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to become what? Commander. He says, over my people Israel, Amen. that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry has come unto me. Can you imagine where there's people, put the word church. God says, the whole reason I'm sending you is to help my church. Amen. There are people who, they are, they are not even aware. They are in church right now. And God says, I brought you here so that you can help my church. And they're not even aware. The reason why you lost your job, I was bringing you to a prophet to anoint you over a particular responsibility. The reason why Saul, they lost the donkeys. There was a reason and a calling. 
He said, until so. He says, now because you have understood your calling, the donkeys you are looking for, they have been found. Now, who's hearing this message? He says, right now, right now, what you are looking for. He says, because now you have understood the will of God. He says, right now, what you are looking for has been found. But the problem is eventually greedy comes in. People begin to look for their, for, for, for their lives. Uh, I haven't done that. I haven't paid that. Then they begin to forget slowly, gradually. They begin that like King Saul. When King Saul became well, uh, the king, he began to lose focus on the calling that God had called him for. God had heard the cry. God wanted him to deliver the people. He says from the Philistines. But when the Philistines came, in the name of, of Goliath the giant, King Saul was hiding in the tent. God says, but I anointed you for the Philistines. He was hiding in the tent. He says, who can go and, and kill Goliath? The Bible says, I anointed you. I have anointed you for the Philistines. Saul had the anointing on him to stand against every Philistine. But gradually he began to compromise. There are certain times people compromise the will of God as they go. When God begins to anoint them, they begin to lose focus. They begin to hear what people are saying. And they begin to see sometimes the people, what they are saying, God is sending them to do so. I told my wife, I was sitting next to my wife. I said, let me tell you something. I said, God is in this. She looked at me. She said, I know. I said, God is in this. I said, listen to me. The first thing the devil did to me that he felt is going to hurt me, he took my private jet. I had worked hard myself for that private jet, and nobody can come out to say they, they, we stole their money or anything. We worked hard, and we bought a private jet, and that was the first thing the devil took. And when the devil took our private jet, he thought it's going to hurt us. And when he took, I looked at my wife, and I said, God gave, and God has taken. And we, we don't have to, to worry anything. Oh, then I said, oh, these people are too strong. Let's take away their freedom. We were arrested. Our freedom was taken out. Our identities, our past, our everything was taken. We lost our identities. The enemy said, that's not enough. The enemy took our reputation. We have no reputation. Media and everything came out. And I looked at my wife, we have lost our reputation. The enemy said, that's not enough. And, and I was just looking at my wife. So we're going to now take a ministry. We'll take this. That was not enough. We'll take your properties, your houses, your hotels. We'll take this. We have lost so many things that actually all of you don't even know. And just look at my wife and they said, don't worry. Eventually, your child. And when I look at my wife, and for the past two years, what we have lost. And I said to my wife, I said, listen to me. God does not sleep no slumber. I said there are certain things God is allowing them to happen because God is about to demonstrate how powerful, how great, what he can do because listen to this, the moment we rebuke this, we shall become like Peter. I said let his will be done. We shall not gradually begin to, 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 to start compromising. I said no, we will not. We will not become like Saul. Who, when God had anointed him, gradually began to lose focus. What people were saying of Goliath. How great he was. How powerful he was. We shall not look at that. I don't care how many troubles will come our way. How many problems will come our way. But our focus is on our calling. The Lord said we must finish this. The Lord said we should do this. The Lord said we should do this work. And we shall do it. Amen. The moment you begin to, to compromise your calling. You compromise your mantle. And so lost it. In Isaiah 60 verse 1, God teaches you how to bounce back. It says what? Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. It says, For behold, the darkness shall come, shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord 
will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Amen. It says darkness will come, will cover the people. It says, but God will shine upon you. There are certain things that will happen to you. I don't know what type of darkness could be. But it says, the moment the darkness shall come, it says, but the light of God shall come upon you and the glory shall be risen upon you. It says, all you have to do is to rise. This is a moment when whatever you are facing, I don't know what you're going through right now. It could be your finances are low, your, 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 your job, it could be your, your, your children, your family. It says right now as darkness is covering the face of the earth, he says rise and it's a moment to shine. Amen. I decree in the name of Jesus. No matter the darkness around you, I see the light of God upon you. You have no idea how you shall rise in that moment. And in this situation you are passing through right now, it's a moment God will sharpen you. It's a moment you shall come out as silver. The Bible says, see, see. It says, see around. Darkness is everywhere. But the Lord shall rise upon you. He says that there shall be light. And in verse 3 of Isaiah 60, the Bible says what? It says, it says, the Gentiles shall come to your light. Amen. Not only Gentiles, it says kings. It says kings to the brightness of your rising. It says it shall be too much. It says do not look at the darkness around. It says look at the light. It says rise. Where Hey, can you imagine you looking at the job you lost? Looking at the donkeys you lost? Can you imagine looking at your child you lost? Your family? And God says to you, he says, right now, all I want you to do, I want you to rise. I want you to shine. He says for the, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Am I speaking to somebody right here? There is something, something to come out. Raise up your right hand. I want you to see something in, in your situation. That God wants you to rise in that situation. This is a moment God is going to raise you. Did you lose your job? Did you lose your finances? Did you lose what you treasure the most? God says, in that moment, I will show my power. Jesus openly told Pilate, he said, you have no power over me, except that which has been given to you by God. He said, all oh, what I'm passing through now is because God gave you that power to do it on me. In, in John 17, Jesus says, All what you gave me I kept, apart from one, Judas, who you gave him power to betray me. All what Judas was doing, in fact, it was God doing it. It was the will of God. It was his will. Because God would raise Jesus on the third day. Your third day is coming. I'm looking for that day. When you should stand in front of the whole congregation and tell them how God brought your 30 day. How you went through certain situations. How you went through certain delays. But you trusted upon the Lord and you gave yourself as a sacrifice. You, you put yourself, uh, you committed your ways before him and you became faithful. And God has made you to come back, to bounce back. The Bible says God has brought us into a wealthy place. A place of abundance. Raise up your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. I stand in agreement with every person right now. It could be a relationship that has gone wrong. It could be a marriage. It could be a child. It could be finances. It could be ministry. It could be business. It could be their marriage. Father, there is something you're communicating in this. Father, there is something you're communicating in this. There is a communication. 
There is a communication. There is a communication. Whatever test, whatever test, Father, we pray. Every person watching me now, they will not fail this test. And their third day has come. They will rise again. I decree you will rise again. That company will rise again. That job will rise again. That position will rise again. That ministry will rise again. That situation will completely take a turn around. If you believe, say in the name of Jesus, I will rise again. I will rise again. Something greater, something bigger is coming. Is coming. Is coming. Is coming. Is coming. Is coming. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say something greater is coming. Say in the name of Jesus. Raise up a right hand right now because things are taking place as I'm talking to you. Listen to me. Why God had hardened the hearts of that fellow is because you didn't understand his perfect will. And that you now know the perfect will. Let me tell you something. Signatures will be signed. Contracts will be approved. I, I'm saying children will be born. Miracles will take place. That you are now understanding the perfect will of God. Things will begin to happen in a different way. And, and God's will will be done upon you. If you believe it, say in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. Say in the name of Jesus, it shall happen. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree by the power of God, let it happen now. Let's raise up your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let it happen. I call upon you now. Any will of Satan, I stop it. Yes. Do you know what it means when a prophet says, I stop it? Yes. Sometimes I just wish we exchange a little bit. You become a prophet and I become you. And you should see how I will respond when a prophet says, I stop it. Sometimes it's not actually knowing the ways of a prophet. They carry power. In Exodus 1, just drop down your hands a little bit. In Exodus 1 verse 12, the Bible says, in Exodus 1 verse 12, the Bible says in this way. It says, but the more they afflicted them, the more what? I'm telling you, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. First, before I declare to you, I declare it upon me and my wife. I said before I declare to you, I declare it upon me and my wife and my child. And then I declare to you. The Bible says the more they have, the more the problems were coming, the Bible says the more they multiplied and grew. Are you ready for this? Yes. What is about to happen? Yes. All leaders of this church, yes. you must put yourself in order Amen. because it's too big. Karaba yes. Santa Ramande. Sit down for a moment. What is about to happen? I'm telling you. The Bible says the more they afflicted them. Oh, God, give me the scripture. It says the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were what? In dread of the children of Israel. They, they became even scared. They said this is too much. The more they what? Afflicted them. The more they multiplied and the more they grew. It has been too much with you. Hear me, ECG. The more they have afflicted you, the more you will multiply and the more you will grow. It has been too much for your family. 
the more the enemy has afflicted your family, the more you shall multiply and grow. I'm not speaking to anyone. I'm speaking to somebody. Not to anyone. I'm speaking to someone. And that someone is the person who their spirit, as I'm talking, their spirit is saying amen. I want you to look around. How many afflictions you have passed through? I want you to see the things you have been going through. The more you have been in those situations, the more you have been passing through those situations, the more you shall multiply and the more you shall grow. I speak in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass. Receive in the name of Jesus. Trying to stop you from every corner, stopping you. You try this, somebody trying to stop you. Ah, fighting you from every corner. What have I done? Trying, you know, trying. He says, the more they did that, they just made things worse. Somebody say, I'll break out. The Bible says, God allowed people, our enemies, to come to be rejoicing, to say, uh huh, uh huh. Look at them. He said, God allowed. So that, so that he can take us unto a place of abundance. He says, it shall be like a dream. It continues saying like, he said, it shall be like a dream. In Romans 8 verse 18, are you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, oh, I'm passing through too much. Yeah, we thank God. God allowed it to be in that way. It is the perfect rule. God allowed you to go through too much. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. I am a shara proud. It says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not even worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. The Bible says, I, I consider not. This is the, the suffering of this moment. I don't consider them worthy. I can't even compare them with the world is about to be revealed. May it be revealed in the name of Jesus. Say the more they are afflicted. Do you know there are things which are supposed to start happening in your life? You'll be surprised. You see, you know some people, they don't even know that it has been a lot of gods, you know, to, you, you know, because you don't know, there is no price without recognition. If you don't know how much you worked, you will not acknowledge the price. Until you know that, I think I've been faithful to God. I've passed. You see, there, there are things you, by now, you are supposed to stop praying. But because you gave yourself as a sacrifice, begin to recognize that. Recognize that as your strength. You see, the devil will just be showing you all your weaknesses. He will not show you your strengths. By now, you could have given up. You could have stopped praying. But you gave yourself as a sack. Now, begin to see that. That's how a price comes. When you begin to recognize your efforts and your works. You will never, you will never acknowledge your salary. Until you begin to acknowledge your efforts and your works. It's a moment you must see. You have stood. You have, you have, you have been tested. Yes. But you are still standing. Yes. Yes. This is the moment to tell God, I am here. Hallelujah. I need my price. All yes. oh, this is God allowed these things to be happening. Mm. One problem after another problem. You are fixing this, another problem. God, God allowed it. He says, the more the afflictions are coming, the more you shall multiply and grow. Do you know the meaning of multiplication? It is where you put an X sign. Maybe you don't understand the, the multiplication. When the Bible says, and they multiply, people they may not understand the meaning of multiply. It's not plus. It's a replication. Do, 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 you, know, do, you, do you know if we say multiply? If I say 10 times, that's multiplication. I'm not saying plus. <laughs> The Bible says, and they multiplied. The Bible says, the suffering of now will not be compared with what God is planning for us. 
there is something God is planning for us. Yes. One of my spiritual sons came to me and he said it to me, Papa, how do you feel with the, 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 the going of your daughter? I looked at him. He said, now you have got only one child. How do you feel? Papa, you might be feeling so bad. I looked at him. I said, number one, you are very stupid because you don't know that you are my son. <laughs> He's like, ah, what are you talking? I said, listen, God blessed me. I said, where I am, I'm a very thankful man that God gave me so many sons and daughters across the world. I said, first, I must acknowledge that before I think of one child who has gone. I said, right now, I've got people. Any country I go, they call me father. I said, it's, it's, I said this is in the natural sense, it doesn't happen. Where have you seen that? I said, there are few people who are recognized as fathers. I said, I'm very young. Actually, people who are older than me call me father. I said, first of all, I must challenge that. I said, after challenging that, I should now say, why? I said, why am I not asking God why he gave me so many children? I said, I've got, in fact, I've got children who are colored, children who are white, children who are black. I said, I've got children across the world. I said, that I have never questioned God. I said, I've got people who are my children from other countries right now. Some are in the studio right now. I said, I said, why am I not asking God why did you give me these children? Why should I? I said, listen, in the first place, I said, I must not. I said, you are my child. I said, all the people you are seeing at this funeral are my, are my children and they're calling me their father. I said, listen to me when I stand and I look at all the children. In fact, I've got millions, not thousands. I've got millions who call me dad. And in fact, I'm very close to them. Then I'm even how I was even close to my own child. Because every Sunday I'm preaching to them. Every Monday I'm preaching to them. Every time I'm having services, international visitors, I said I'm very close even to them than I was even to my child. And they are closer to me than in fact their biological parents are closer. They're every day watching me. They don't watch their dad. They, are, they don't even watch their brother. They are watching me. God has brought a certain relationship that is more closer I said, they're watching me every day. They have never spent a day where they watched five hours watching their sister. I said, they watch me. This is spiritual. I said, listen, I recognize this first. I said, if anyone will come and challenge that, then he will be able to come to convince me to feel so low and down over Israel. I said, number one, I look at the blessings. Oh, these are my children. I said, look, look. I said, look. Look, look at this hala here. In a, in a tie. Look at that. Look at Manasseh over there. He looks at me and he says, Dad. All the way from Gabon. All the way from Gabon. Look at that. He's, he say, he's like, my father. I, I have got so many people that God has given me responsibility as a father. You understand what I'm saying? Look there, from Netherlands. I got my son over there, all the way from Netherlands. You see, Pastor Daniel, he says he was actually in my house uh, a few weeks ago. He was staying in my house. Oh, hey, Father, you're calling me dad. And, and someone looked at me like, oh, when did the major one have his... <laughs> How did the major one have <laughs> I said, listen to me. God has given me so many children. So yes, it's so painful to have lost my biological child. But I've got all of you who God gave me as my children. Let's thank God for that. Clap hands for Jesus. Look at all of them. Look at all of them. You, you, you get my point. So I, I sit and I look at the things. In the second Corinthians 4 16, these, these, these are my, my, my closing words. In the second Corinthians 4 verse 16, just check this scripture. 
I want to show you this. Hmm. This person didn't like my answer. He's like, huh? I'm like, ah, you're asking me how I feel. I said, how do I feel looking at you as my child? I said, how did I even give birth to you? How does it even happen that you call me your father? I said, don't you see a miracle here? How? How? Does it just happen that you just woke up in the morning and you're calling me your father? Is this not a blessing from God? God didn't say to Abraham, you shall be a father of your child. He said, you shall be a father of nations. I said, God elevated me to that level. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, the Bible says what? It says, for all things are for your sex. That grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. NIV, I want you to check something. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though our outward man may seem to perish away, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day by the word of God. By the word of God. My last prayer for everybody else. Father, in the name of Jesus. These are not people the enemy is going to bring down. Today is a day we are coming back. Today is a day we are bouncing back. We are bouncing back. By the armor of the Spirit and the power of God. In the powerful name of Jesus. What you have been going through. What you have been passing through. Jehovah God. Is saying. I will now manifest my power. I will prove the world wrong. I will prove the people wrong. I will prove that woman wrong. I will prove that man wrong. Media houses will be proved wrong. Wicked people will be proved wrong. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. People who are laughing at you. Are about to laugh with you. I stretch my hand over you. I speak a miracle right now. I decree a miracle right now. Now, I want you to pray in agreement. Stretch your hand towards me in the studio, on prophetic channel, wherever you're watching right now. We decree as I transfer the anointing, the power of God, to move where you are right, your direction. God said to Moses, raise your hand towards the sea. I raise my hand towards you. I raise my hand towards your direction. Let there be a move of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A miracle where you are. A testimony where you are. Receive now.